Hello, everybody, and welcome to our MXGP TV studio show here on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Malin, and Lisa Leyland. We'll introduce her properly in a moment. But we're round four of the FI Motocross World Championship, and it's the MXGP of the Netherlands. And we're at Austin. It's the uh, first time we've been here in a long, long time, actually. Uh, we've had a little bit of rain in the lead up to the Grand Prix, but the sun is out, the track is drying out, so hopefully we're set for some fantastic racing this weekend. On today's show, we've got Louis Vosters, uh, team owner for Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP. We've got the championship leader in MX2, Mattia Guadagnini, and then we've got uh, Henry Jacoby coming in to join us as well, our final guest of the day. But before we go anywhere else, look who's back. Lisa's back. <laughs> Good to see you, Lisa. Welcome back to our studio show here. Good to see you back in the paddock. How are you? You've got your wingman back. I've got my wingman back. <laughs> I, I think I'm good. It's good to be back. I know it's been pretty tough for you, though, hasn't it? It's been really tough for me, yeah. Difficult times. Yeah. But don't worry. It's, it's okay now. <laughs> You're back. You're <laughs> <Yeah>. back. <laughs> Taking care of business. But uh, yeah. well, let's bring in our first guest, uh, Mr. Louis Vosters, team owner, as I said, Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP. And uh, good to see you, sir. Uh, how are you feeling? I'm fine, but first of all, back, welcome back, Lisa, from my side as well. Oh. But how's your daughter, Rose? Yeah, she's perfect. She's lovely. Really, really nice. Different world, different world to motocross, but it's it's nice. Okay, nice. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Lisa. Obviously, you couldn't stay away, could you? Uh, are you pleased to be back, ready to go? Yeah, yeah, I am ready to go. I'm ready to go. It's nice to be back in the studio show as well. You Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Oh, well, let, let's start then, uh, Louis. Um, obviously, here we are in Os, fourth round of the championship, home GP. Um, for you because obviously Dutch Dutch team um, you've got a Dutch rider as well with Glenn um, what does this race race mean to you as a um, you know as a fan of the sport and as a team owner it's always nice to to have home GP but especially this one in Oz is uh, is the club is is the place where, where uh, Glenn uh, is born and, and Glenn is is, is, yeah, is living here close mm -hmm. to here and he has a lot of fans here around so it's nice to be here for all our sponsors as well and no I, I like it I really like it and what about Glenn you just mentioned him there obviously he was born in Oss he's you know grown up in this area um, how much is he looking forward to riding here at home because I know he is doing the GoPro lap later on he wants to try and do everything for this club how's he looking forward to it is he is he pressured at all or is he quite relaxed Mm, this week I I didn't see anything special, but but I know he's really really excited and he worked really hard the last few weeks and he was looking forward to this GP. Cool for sure. And you said he worked really hard the last few weeks. The last two rounds have been good to him, haven't they? Especially the podium in Majora. I mean that was brilliant. The first podium in blue. Yes, uh, but uh, it was also not that easy for Glenn. New team, new brand. He was searching for the right settings, bike mm -hmm. settings, and mm -hmm. we tested a lot. So at, at the end, yeah, he's happy, happy with the bike. And uh, now the results are coming. We saw it last uh, GP in uh, Majora. Mm. Well, he seems to have settled in quite well to the team. I mean, what's he like to work with? Um, yeah, he, Glenn, I think he's three, four days per week at the team, in the gym. And uh, he feels more or less like home and uh, it's nice to work like that with him and but also the other riders uh, they are uh, yeah quite a lot of time there during the week so nice atmosphere mm -hmm. yeah and obviously i've been to your workshop and uh, you know you've let the cameras in there as well it's a, it's a great facility isn't it you know where everybody can come together as a team you have the gym there there's you know there's plenty of spaces for everybody to relax and chill and and enjoy each other's company yeah. Which, is, which is important. But um, obviously, he's, he got his podium last week. Uh, I guess nobody was more happy than you. Uh, you know, new signing to the team and, yep, round three, podium. Yes, I, I, I hope it's a little bit like a turning point for Glenn, you know. Yeah. Mm. Because uh, I, I don't want to say he was struggling, but, but he was searching. He was searching and now it seems that everything, everything is settled and uh, now he's happy. And what about Jeremy? Let's talk to uh, a rider that's been with you now for a few years. Um, how would you evaluate his start to the season after the first three rounds? Um, yeah, Jeremy was a little bit uh, struggling with his health, some health problems. But uh, it seems that it's solved now. And uh, I expect the coming GPs quite a lot from, from Jeremy because we all know it's a good, consistent rider. And he's improving year by year. We saw it two years in a row uh, second in the championship so I think he will be back the coming GPs and what are Jeremy's thoughts on how his season has, has gone because I, I know as a rider sometimes when you don't have the best start or the start that you expect you know you can ask yourself some questions I mean he's a very relaxed guy anyway 
is it a case of him just saying, you know what, one result will just change everything? Is is that what he's? Is that kind of his mindset? Uh, I think uh, the mindset from 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 Jeremy is more or less he tried to grab the points, what what's the, the maximum points, what is possible. He's every every GP he's doing his best, give give hundred percent, and at the end when the day is over, yeah. He's he's hap not always happy with the re result, but the maximum he put in, you know. So uh, I I think uh, he's already quite happy that uh, because of this health problems he took some points, and yeah. now I I think he can really start the season. Yeah, and obviously with this next four races in a row, then um, you think he's ready ready for that challenge then? Yes, yeah. yes, I'm quite sure. Okay. Okay, and uh, moving on to Ben Watson, new boy. How's he settling in? I know he had a difficult first GP, but he seems to have found some consistency now. Yes, he was struggling in, in Russia, mm. and, and then uh, UK uh, GP Majora was quite good for him, uh, top 10 results. And uh, also uh, Ben, he's improving week by week. He works really hard, and uh, I think he finds also the, the right bike setting. So... Uh, I expect also some good results to come in GPs. Because mm. if you speak to Ben about his goals, he doesn't want to s talk about them or say them out loud, but he knows where he wants to be in his mind. What were your goals for him at the start of the season for his first MXGP year? Yeah, uh, we put no pressure, uh, but if he can do uh, be a consistent top 10 rider, I'm I'm happy. And uh, at the end, uh, finishing top 10 in the championship would be great for him. Mm. Okay. And uh, before we let you go, obviously, we are here at OSS, not a million miles away from the workshop. Um, and the first time in a long time that we've been here, probably since 98, I think, a 125 GP. Uh, despite the rain, the track is looking in pretty good condition. So we should get some good racing tomorrow. What's, what's it like as a racetrack? It's, it, it's, it's a nice track. It's yeah. a nice track, a li little bit up and down. Spe <laughs> that's uh, special for the Netherlands, mm. yeah. let's say. But... Uh, I expect really, really uh, good races tomorrow. Will be a nice GP. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. Uh, obviously, uh, we're out of time now. But uh, thanks, Louis, for joining us here today. All the best for this weekend, home GP, and for the the rest of the season. We've got a busy period coming up now. Four races in a row. So uh, hopefully, we get your guys back on the podium again, just like last time out, Louis Vosters. Right. We'll be back in a moment with uh, Mattia Guadagnini. But before we catch up with the Red Bull KTM rider, let's hear or let's see the highlights from MX2 Race 2 Majora two weeks ago, the MX GP of Italy. Fernandez, not another good start, but uh, Yago Kietz this time pushes everybody wide on the exit of the turn. Yago Kietz takes the Fox hole shot for the first time this year. He's got Guadagnini around the outside of him going through turn two, though, but we've got riders upside down here. And Beniston, your race one winner, is off the bike. Opening lap here, and Ruben Fernandez is down as well. Your championship leader has been in a tangle. Guadagnini looks to make a pass on the uh, Pierce for the lead, and he has. Frantic opening lap. <laughs> Fernandez charges down the inside of Weckman then. Yago Kitz leaves the door open. Rennie Hoffer tries to dive down the inside, and he'll have the advantage! And oh, he had to land with the brakes on. Whoa, pull me down from the ceiling, guys, because that was a big moment there that almost ended in tears. Fernandez. Oh, lucky not to lose a front wheel there. That marker looks back at him. Fernandez looking half spokes. Van de Mostrike's going to make a move here. I think he's going to displace gears fairly quickly. Roman de Mostrike finally gets up the inside of Yago Hit. Mattia Guadagnini. Guadagnini wins the race for the second time and he's going to take victory at the Italian Grand Prix. And what a big moment that is. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It was my dream uh, winning my first GP in Italy. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, see you next race, but now enjoy the moment. <laughs>
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Guadagnini, your overall winner from Renault. Yago Kitt, third overall. Rome van der Mostijk, fourth. Thibaut Beniston, rounding out the top five. We have a new leader, Mattia Guadagnini. So three rounds, three red plates. Tom Vial, Ruben Fernandez, and now Mattia Guadagnini. Yago Kitt, third overall. Monster Energy Yamaha, Factory MX, two. His teammate, Maxim Renault, second overall but our overall Grand Prix winner. Wow, that expression says it all. We've got a brand new championship leader's red plate. He had no idea that he was the new leader of the championship. Welcome back to our live studio show here on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Malin, and Lisa Leyland. Our second guest is in now, and uh, of course, he's the MX2 Championship leader, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing's Mattia Guadagnini. And uh, Mattia, before we go anywhere, this is mm. your first time on the studio show, and we normally have a ritual here where mm -hmm. uh, just sing us one or two lines <laughs> from your favorite song, just really, really quickly. Everyone's done it, it's oh. fine. <laughs> Uh, but no. there's not, no you pressure, you're not before. live or anything. <laughs> you had to say it before, then I... It's okay, it's okay, we're just testing. Uh, but look, hey, if I'd have said to you, if I'd have said to you in Russia three, week, uh, uh, three rounds ago that you would be leading the world championship in MX2 after three rounds, no. would you believe me? No, no, for sure not. No, no, but uh, yeah, for sure, that wasn't my goal and uh, I was just trying to uh, feel... Yeah, just to take the the read on of the MX2 class. So uh, also the first race went went pretty good uh, with two best start, but uh, I was pretty happy with the the eighth place finish. So uh, yeah, for sure I I wanted to improve from there and uh, get better and better every race. But for sure not to be uh, the red plate on, on next uh, two rounds. So yeah, well <laughs> we were we were just watching uh, Majura there um, second ra uh, you were second in race one. I mean, that was okay. It was yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the second race, you know, to go out and to win it, to yeah. lead it from the first lap, was it a difficult race to manage emotionally? Because you're at home, you're in Italy, Italian team, <laughs> Majora, uh, and you're leading the race. Um, and you can win the GP. So the mind was quite relaxed, or maybe the last 10 minutes a little bit of, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally, yes. But I, I don't know why I was calm and... Uh, just relax and focus it on my riding just uh, I don't know it was uh, strange and not the feeling that you should uh, uh, think uh, when you when you think uh, about your first GP uh, win and uh, you don't think about this no, uh, this no, no. calm this uh, mm. I don't know it's strange but yeah. uh, it was nice <laughs> Because you didn't just win the race, did you? You won the GP and you took the red plate on home soil. I mean, that must have been so special for you. Yeah, for sure. It will uh, a day that uh, I will remember for sure. And uh, doing it in Italy is uh, it's also more special. So, uh, yeah, really good. <laughs> and of course, we, we saw it just earlier. The look on your face when they gave you that red plate. <laughs> it was just priceless, priceless. Yeah, uh, yeah I didn't th talk about the, the the red plate for sure. I was just, uh, <laughs> wow, I won my first GP. And yeah, who cares about the red plate uh, in you this moment? Aware, you weren't I, aware of it. I just didn't, didn't think about that because I was also fifth in the championship before the Majora round. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I just didn't think about that. So, <laughs> wow, it was special. How cool was this moment? Last lap, past pit lane, nice big uh, <laughs> light in the candles. That was just super special. Super yeah, special. because you are focused all the 35 minutes on the riding and then you cross the finish line and then, wow, you can relax and... Uh, uh, you can go uh, editing the emotion so okay. and the team you genuinely didn't know did you 
<laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, that is the best red plate uh, handing over I've ever seen. <laughs> Somebody, all, all his Christmases came at once yeah, yeah. then. I think whoever your photographer is for the team, that you need that one frame. Yeah. Like the yeah. what, you know, because that, that is brilliant. Um, but obviously, Majora wasn't your first race win. Uh, that came in uh, in Matterley Basin, also in race two. Um, was the one in England more special or the, the race win... Just race wins now, not the GP. The race win in Matali or the race win in Majora? Which one would you prefer? Uh, I think in Matali because it was the first one. And, uh, well, uh, the four in race one was already pretty good. And then uh, I, I said, OK, uh, if I finish four uh, to four seconds to the lead, uh, maybe I could go. I could go for the win. And uh, when I had the good start in uh, race two, uh, I tried to to pass first in the first lap. And then uh, I said, okay, now I can go. I can focus on on just on myself. Also, there I was uh, really calm and focused on my riding. And then, uh, yeah, finally, when uh, it was the last lap, I crossed the line. And then, uh, also, there was a a lot of emotional moment. So. Mm. I think you need, I need, you need to work on your uh, whip technique. <laughs> 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 it, wa it wasn't big enough. <laughs> on, the, on the finish line, Jeff, it wasn't, it wasn't big enough. <laughs> we'll see that in a minute, but go on. Well, you've never actually raced Matali before, have you? How was the track for you? The uh, track was amazing. I, I raced there last oh, year. Race? Yeah, okay. uh, I did the first uh, GP uh, in oh, the yeah. MX2 class, and then I started with the European Championship. Oh. And uh, yeah, it the track looks it's uh, amazing it's fun and yeah. uh, i really like uh, art park art park uh, track like this and uh, with a lot of jumps so it was yeah, yeah. perfect for it's a for favorite me. for many riders yeah. matali yeah. isn't it um well what was on. the goal for the championship at the beginning of the season and now we've had a few rounds and you're in the position where you are now with the red plate have you changed your goal now for the rest of the year uh, yeah, a little bit, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Uh, the goal and uh, before starting the championship was maybe to be in the top three. Okay. So yeah, it was uh, already a big goal for me. And uh, but yeah, yeah, now I'm leading. So uh, of course I'm not looking for to for to be third anymore. So no, no, no. I'm looking for, for the win, but. I know it's just the first year for me, so I yeah, just to take uh, GP by GP and then uh, we will see. But I, I will try to give my best uh, and uh, then we will see. Okay. All right, uh, before we let you go, just need to do something here. Um, just a, a quick reminder, actually, about our MXGP TV uh, platform, our new platform, of course, uh, new era, new everything, new look of MXGP TV. Very easy to guide your way through it as well on any app, device, uh, whatever. So uh, if you have it, thanks a lot. Otherwise, if you know people that uh, would like to subscribe, just spread the word. Come on, do it. You, you know it. You know it makes sense. It's mm -hmm. the best place to watch MXGP live, uninterrupted, no TV commercials, and you get to see the likes of Mattia Guadagnini here uh, go and stand on the top steps of the podiums and win <laughs> races. But uh, <laughs> Mattia, thanks for joining us, and uh, all the best this weekend and for the rest of the championship. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully we see you now. Uh, more race wins and, and more podiums. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks no for worries, thank you. Thank Matteo Guadagnini, our championship leader, and uh, of course, we'll be catching him live tomorrow on MXGP TV. Right, our final guest is in, Henry Jacoby. We'll meet him in a moment. Here's highlights so from MXGP race two from Majora two weeks ago. <laughs> MXGP race two. Wow, oh, this one's going to be a good one. Very, very tentative coming down that hill. It's going to get sticky if the rain stops now. Going from bad to worse for your race one winner, Roman Fevre. Again, not the fairy tale return to 2015 where he won the Grand Prix here. Kai Rowley throws his goggles away. <music> Jeffrey Hurlings has found his way past Koldenoff, and it's now Hurlings who leads, and it's Hurlings who is on 40 points, the same as Koldenoff, who will stand on the top step of the podium. 
Caro is still not able to do anything with Jacoby. It'd be a good boost as well for the uh, JM Honda Racing Squad. Jacoby got the speed, the talent, the fitness, the desire, the big elbows and the set of boxing gloves. That's when he needs them. This is Geiser. Oh, parked on a hill. That's coming up towards the uh, the restaurant, isn't it? So uh, difficult part of the racetrack just before the Monster Energy tabletop. Nightmare for Kai Rowley, though. He threw off the goggles thinking he was going to find a way past Jacoby, but Jacoby stayed ahead of him, and he has really... Oh, and he's going to go for it now. He does get the drive. He finds a way to... Oh, so I thought the back end was coming around on him there. Jonas moves past into fifth place, and Fevre down again. Watch this here, just out of the corner. Just stayed a little bit lower. Close down the door. Geiser has passed Prado, he's now going after Jonas. Jeffrey Hurlings, the final jump down past pit lane. He knows he's got the race win. He knows he's got the victory as well. And for the first time this year, Jeffrey Hurlings wins the overall Grand Prix. He wins here in Italy at Majora. And for Jeffrey Hurlings, that is his first Grand Prix victory since uh, Bienza. Jonas, Jonas gets fourth on the line from Jacoby. I don't know what to say. After the first motor, like, I got a rug between my rear brake, and, you know, that's it's a technical sport, mechanical sport, and things like that may happen, and then I, I was so, like, like, damn, I really wanted to win this GP, and then I fought my way back to six, and second motor, everything just worked out great, and never doubt this Red Bull KTM racing team, this bike was amazing today, like, keeping it safe here on this track with so much mud, so, uh, want to give it to Red Bull KTM racing once again, and uh, thank you, everyone. First GP winners in for the year. Welcome back to our final part on the MXGP TV show here with me, Paul Malin and Lisa Leyland. Our third guest is in GM Racing Honda's or GM Honda Racing's uh, rider, Henry Jacoby. And uh, Henry, good to see you here. Uh, obviously, you almost didn't make it in time. <laughs> 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 you went outside for about a week. But um, look, second year in, MXGP, in the MXGP class for you. And actually, last year, you know, when you look at the results and, and just watch everything back, you just looked like you were finding your feet that second half of the year. Then you had to go out and miss the last six races, which was three in Belgium, three in Trentino. Um, tough year, wasn't it? Yeah, um, it was really difficult last year. Just to, to be honest, it was I was sometimes some weekends I r really felt off with the bike. We didn't find any th any solution over the, the weekend, you know, because also it was really a short amount of time to try something. Yeah. It's uh, you have the free practice and immediately the time practice. You don't want to make big changes on the bike. Mm. Also, uh, but yeah, I don't want to go so much into that year because uh, it was really, really difficult. And also I ended it with a dislocated shoulder and uh, Lommel. And um, obviously since then, uh, you've moved teams anyway. You've gone from SM Action to Jackie Martin's uh, JM Honda Racing. Um, how's that been for you? Um, good. I really, I really liked it um, from the first second on. I, uh, I remember when I, I was okay with the shoulder. We went to the to in Jackie's garden, you know, <laughs> <laughs> <We> <laughs> just <laughs> just uh, practice a little bit uh, with the with the bike, stock bike, and I immediately felt like, wow, it's uh, it turns really nice. It's uh, it's like back in the old days you know with uh, with Kawasaki and every uh, the years before when you feel really really well on the bike and uh, I started to to remember how this is and I think I it makes me a little bit now more confident on the track sure well tough start to the season in Russia but you picked up points in Matali in race two right after your audition for the new Superman movie <laughs> in race one yeah what happened? Like, you were lucky to walk away from that. Look at we've this. just got it here. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we've got more than one angle, don't worry. 
but that was just like a big, oh. big. Um, and we we saw it from the side first of all, and yeah. then obviously video and and whatever else. But what what happened? Lucky, I also didn't get hit yeah, to yeah. When, yeah. You, when you look at this. Yeah, I, I tried to move as fast as I can to get off the track, but it was so painful. Mm. Um, um, yeah, but I don't know what happened. I mm. just I think they watered the track a little bit, and here I lost the feet. Yeah, just off the pegs. And you you s you sink together yeah. on the bike, and that what makes your wrist also go yeah. like this. Whiskey. And I just uh, <laughs> I thought I I. I th I maybe can get onto it, but at one moment I, th I knew it was over. So I, I let go, made a 180 belly flop, whatever, <laughs> and luckily landed a little bit on the downside. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. otherwise I would think it's quite... I, th I think you'll make a good Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's almost got a red cape on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, let's talk Italy. Last time out, second race. Uh, Majora, fantastic start. And then you held third for very uh, for much of the race what last three or four laps and then eventually finished in fifth place but uh, how was that race for you uh, long yeah. <laughs> <laughs> long it was uh, yeah I don't know why uh, I smiled already when it started to rain at the MX2 podium uh, ceremony so I thought man this is gonna shake the the the, the riders a little bit up you know it's yeah. not that uh, the one two three four that already fixed before the race yeah so, um, yeah, I made a good start, which I do almost everyone mm. since this year. Every start is quite good. But um, I was third or something. And in the beginning, I was just trying to, to not crash. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, so Russia, two so times zero. First time in England, first race, zero points. Yeah. So I was just uh, trying to not crash. And then, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but how, how difficult were the conditions? Because obviously w there was a serious amount of rain on a dry, hard-packed track. That first downhill was just shiny. It looked like ice, but was it that bad in the end or not um, really? No, not no. so bad. Okay. But uh, s for sure it, the, the roost was the worst, I think, for the, for the riders behind me because now everybody say, oh, you had the speed of Cairoli. You even pulled away, you know, from him. Mm. I say, yeah, but if anyone, the fastest rider on the planet, is behind someone close like this it's so difficult to make a path you have yeah. to be yeah. a lot faster and on these conditions yeah. I think uh, yeah. it's not easy but did it feel good for you to be battling up at the sharp end again yeah yeah, yeah. really good I think or well, I hope it gives uh, confidence and uh, so you I'm, I'm not expecting me to go now top five every race yeah. because this would be like uh, not true <laughs> no. yeah. and uh, but I think it gives you confidence and you can step by step build onto it. Yeah, and definitely. obviously, bef just as you uh, entered into the studio area um, while we were watching the MXGP highlights, we, we spoke about the last lap. Obviously, Paul's Jonas passing you put you from fourth to fifth. What did you say happened? Uh, yeah, he, he, <laughs> he, he made like an old school, uh, old school move. He just pulled the clutch and revved it up. Uh, and I was, I was just scared because I don't know why, but normally I... Normally, this is not me. Everybody yeah. probably well, knows it's you it. Doing it to the other yeah. <laughs> so, but I think it was just that the last three laps, I uh, I was like, just just drive it home, yeah. Yeah. fifth, sixth, whatever. Just just finish this, and uh, that's why I was probably not prepared for for that last corner thing there. Yeah, the yeah. old school move. <laughs> old school move. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, well, uh, regardless, it's been your best race finish uh, yes. in the MXGP class. So for uh, that, I guess, and you mentioned it, having the confidence on the Honda now, feeling a little bit more confident coming into this round? Yes, for sure. We, we practice a lot of sand. Uh, really? <laughs> well, <laughs> Jake, Jackie has his workshop in one of the corners in Lomas. Yeah. So <laughs> um, <laughs> Literally. I, I think it's... Okay, it's still sand. I'm not a sand specific rider, so yeah. I guess there will be good sand riders, also good. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I hope I can feel good on this track. And if not, we will have in two weeks, we have Lomme. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a track you know very well. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of rain, actually, hasn't there, recently? Um, but this place looks like it's drying out now. It should be okay for tomorrow, you think? I think really, really nice now because normally it's quite uh, hard and underneath, yeah. and now the rain made it 
quite a good centric, I guess. Yeah, yeah, a little bit softer. Well, look, we are out of time. Henry Jacoby, thanks for joining us and uh, all the best this weekend and thanks for the rest of the season. Don't go anywhere. But, uh, well, that's it. We are out of time here. Our fourth studio show of the season is done with Lisa Lane and her first one. And uh, we'll be <laughs> back next week with more of the same when we go to Czech Republic Locket. So join us then. But uh, in the meantime... Three, 1 o'clock today, 105, the first race of the day, EMX open, and then it's action all the way, uninterrupted. We've also got EMX 250 as well. So join you for that uh, today, and tomorrow it's all MX2 and MXGP. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.